What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who don't know, my name is Chris Moore and in today's video, we got a 2020 Yamaha R6. But before we get into that part of the video, I want to show you a little bit about what's going on. For those of you who are OG subscribers to the channel, you've been watching our drag racing videos and you've been seeing the progress of Mamba throughout the season. You've seen how we built this bike in nine days and we are currently the second fastest no bar motorcycle in the world with a 636 at 224 miles per hour. So our last points race of the season is coming up this weekend. Today is Tuesday. We are leaving tomorrow for the race we're getting the final preparations done as you can notice you see the chain is super loose the reason for that is for one we're about to put a new chain but two we gotta shorten the bike up one inch yeah that's right boys they changed the rules on us so me jeremy teasley we've been going back and forth going crazy fast with these gsxr 1000s and we have kind of ran away with the field. And what I mean by that is, you know, me and him were in the 630s, everybody else in the 650s for the most part. Uh, Rodney Williford did go a 640 pass, but for the most part, you know, everybody else is a good bit behind. So they came in, changed the rules. They gave all the Hayabusa's two inches of extra wheelbase, and then they allowed them to take 25 pounds of weight off the bike. So that's a huge gain for them. And then they made us shorten the wheelbase up one inch in order to try to keep the class closer together. So that is gonna really make a big difference. Not to mention this weekend, the weather is supposed to be crazy cool. Maryland is really low in elevation and the weather is gonna be crazy dry, crazy fast this weekend. Now that sounds good, but that is also gonna make the tuning game very, very tricky. So in other words, these bikes, when they race, they are on the edge from first gear all the way into fifth gear. And a little more horsepower is not always a good thing. For us, it's gonna make the bike much harder to control. The bike is gonna be much more prone to wheelie. So for those of you who are looking forward to our race video, our GoPro front wheel mount is probably going to be pretty badass this time. So I think we're going to have some nice wheelies going on. I hope not, but more than likely it's probably going to happen. We've also got another bike that we're adding in, I guess you would say, to the channel. This is another pro street bike. This bike belongs to a friend out of Florida. It is a pro street bike. He's taken the year off. He's getting back into racing and we are going to be doing the tuning from here on out for him, kind of helping him with the prep work of that bike. So you'll be seeing some videos of it. There he is guys, world champion Corvette driver. That's all I've heard about, world champion Corvette driver. Yeah, that's him guys, BJ. So he's got his work cut out for him this weekend with this weather change. And plus two, we've added a new bike to the field under our camp. One more thing for him to do, cross your fingers. We are in the points lead with Black Mamba. Yeah, that's right, guys. One race away from naming us El Champion. All right, guys, we got work to do here. Let's go get this R6 ready. The color combination on this thing is sick. I love the front end, the way these bikes look. Whether you're a Yamaha fan or not, you cannot tell me this is not one of the best looking motorcycles on the market today. Look at that thing, the headlights and stuff just look so good on these things. So this bike is one that has basically a thousand miles on the bike and the customer's got a pretty good sounding exhaust on it. So the first thing you're gonna notice is it looks factory. Well, it is kinda. He has taken the exhaust, he basically drilled all the rivets out right here, 
took the cone off, took the packing out of the exhaust out and cut it and shortened it. Basically shortened the whole muffler in half. Put it back together, the thing actually sounds really good. Now I'm gonna try to get a video of it, but he has also done a cat delete pipe he, uh, I asked him what brand it was. He said it was an eBay special. So basically, long story short, he does not have a lot of money on the exhaust system on this thing. We're gonna see what kind of gains he gets from this exhaust. Now, we don't really have a baseline pull to go off of, but we do, uh, you can compare to other videos on YouTube, whatever. But like I said, this should be a fun one and I think you'll really like the way it sounds. We're about to fire it up and do a baseline pull now and go from there, okay guys? Stay with us. <laughs> sounds pretty good for stock, huh? All right guys, here we go, baseline pull. system so this guy did not spend very much money at all on his exhaust and in my opinion it sounds excellent uh, actually better than I thought it was gonna sound 
usually when people make their own exhaust systems we have to try to just smile in their face and eh, be nice but now nah, this one actually sounds really good so this one he did a good job with it i was highly impressed in the way it sounds and it does perform good now would an aftermarket exhaust perform better yeah probably so um but for the money you know he spent slash what he gained he's doing really good so you can see we got the first pull and the last pull on the screen at this point we on the green line we made 105 horsepower but you can see all the dips and stuff we've got going on in the horsepower and then it falls off pretty hard and then the red line is his tuned horsepower so you can see everywhere throughout the rpm curve let me change my camera angle here he has increased so he went from 59 to 62 so basically throughout the power curve he gained and a lot of this power dip is due to the adjustable velocity stacks that yamahas have so these uh, velocity stacks move up and down and we can control where they move up and down and i've got it smoothed out the best we could now it'll always have some power dip but no matter what we, we've got it as smooth as possible the transition so you can see where he had the power dip uh, we went from 97 to 105 horsepower. You're definitely gonna feel that, guys. Seat of the pants, that's gonna smack you in the back of the head. Uh, big, big, big difference. Even when I was dynoing it, as I watched the RPMs go across the screen, the tack, you'll see, you know, you would literally see it hit that dip just by watching the tachometer. So what now I'm gonna switch over here to what we got in the ECU. And we're going to show you what is going on in the ECU of this bike. So we're going to click on other maps. We're going to go over here to the ETV. That stands for electronic throttle valve. And then we're going to go to first gear. It's basically the same restrictions in all the gears. Up here, you can see these are your throttle percentages. In other words, this is how much gas you're giving it. 12%, 14%, all the way over to 100% throttle. And then these are your RPMs. As you basically increase the RPMs, you guys know what I'm talking about. So anyways, long story short, you can see over here, we go to 100% throttle in this 100% category, but you see how delayed it is. So at 40, uh, 5,000 RPMs, we've only got 44% throttle, even when you're wide open. So even though you got the gas beep, pinned, you guys like those sound effects, don't you? Even though you got the gas pinned, you're only getting 44%. Sorry, dude. Anyway, so as you can scroll down, you can see they slowly come up, but it hits 100% throttle only for 2,000 RPMs. Thanks a lot, Yamaha. And then after that, they cut you back to 82% throttle and they reduce it back at 13.5. So anyways, that's the same throughout the gears. Let's just put it in fifth. You can see, boom, same thing, throttle restrictions. So we remove all that in the ECU flash. The next thing I wanna show you here is the ignition timing maps, okay? So let's just say put it in first gear. We're gonna same scenario with your throttle percentages, RPM over here. You can see as we roll over, we go from 38 degrees of ignition timing uh, up to 42 down to 38 and then at 10,000 rpms we're down to 32 degrees of ignition timing at 13.5 we are down to 31 degrees of ignition timing now i'm not gonna tell you self-proclaimed tuners what ignition timing we ended up with but let me just go ahead and tell you that is a restriction and that is holding us back. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something today. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Not only are you gonna see more dyno videos like this and get to learn about more bikes, but you're also gonna get to see us kick ass at the racetrack. So anyways, all that is coming up soon. Smash that like button, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, eh, maybe you'll like the next one better. All right, guys, that's it. See ya.